welcome to the 30 second lecture of graph theory. Uh, in the last class, we had discussed um, the max flow mean cut theorem, uh, which stated that in a network, the value of the maximum flow is less than equal to the sorry value of the maximum flow is equal to the capacity of the minimum cut. Uh, the value of the flow we defined as if you you can consider any cut and uh, the kind of the flow which uh, which goes across the cut is the value of the flow. Essentially, the sum of the flows on the forward arcs minus the sum of the flows on the reverse arcs. While um, it is very clear that for any cut this will be less than equal to capacity of the cut namely the sum of the capacities of the forward arcs of the cut. Now, uh, the question is only that is it possible that in uh, the maximum flow will uh, achieve the capacity of the minimum capacity cut. So, the max flow min cut theorem says yes, uh, the maximum flow will be always like that that means to be equal to the capacity of the minimum cut. Now, the question is to uh, find out the maximum flow. So, uh, we mentioned that the method is to use um, increment uh, the, the in so given a flow how to increase the value of the flow that was uh, what we discussed in the last class. So, the method was to find a uh, f incrementing path starting from x to y, x being the source and y being the uh, um, y being the sink, right. So, the what was the f incrementing path? If you start, uh, if you consider uh, a path starting from x, so and going towards y, so we will say that the if the the uh, edges you can consider the edges on this path and if it is a forward edge with respect to the uh, direct the, the traversal of the uh, from x to y uh, if the if it's a forward edge and the capacity of the arc is still greater than the value of the flow on the the current flow on that arc then there is something more which can flow on the arc. Therefore, it is an unsaturated edge with respect to this flow. And similarly, uh, suppose it is a reverse arc uh, on the path, then uh, if the flow value is not 0 there, it means you can cancel some flow and make a forward movement, right. That is, uh, if there is a non-zero flow on the reverse arc, then, uh, then that is also uh, that is an F positive arc. Uh, there also we can make a an f incrementing paths will consist of only f positive arcs and uh, uh, if it is a reverse arc it should be f positive and if it is a forward arc it should be unsaturated arcs. So, then if you can find such a path from f x to y then you can push a little more flow from x to y this is the idea you can increment the flow what you what you do is you inspect the edges on the uh, um, on this x to y path, say x to y path. So, it can be something like this and now uh, you consider each path. If it is a forward arc, then uh, see how much more is there, what is the difference between the capacity uh, of this arc c of a minus f of a here and then. Uh, so, if it is on the other hand, if it is a reverse arc, then you see how much is the value of the flow here this is and then the, the minimum of these values right depending on uh, if it is a reverse arc then we, we take the value of that edge the uh, f of a itself and then if it is a reverse arc we consider this among all these values you take the minimum this is uh, the we can say that this is the amount the extra which you can push through the path and then uh, we increment 
the value of the flow uh, by incrementing by that epsilon uh, on all the forward arcs and decre decreasing that epsilon on the reverse arcs and uh, th that will be clearly a flow. Why? Because if you consider any, any vertex, what if it is two forward arcs with respect to the path, then what does it mean? There is an increment here, there is an increment here also. If it is uh, two reverse arcs with respect to that, then there is a decrement here, there is a decrement here also. On the other hand, if it is one forward arc and one reverse arc, then uh, we see that the flow will, um, because these are in the opposite directions, one is an in, both are sorry, both are incoming arcs, right. So, then um, so, therefore, uh, one is an increment, one is a decrement, right? That will work. Oh, the same situation when both are um, outgoing arcs, right, with respect to the path. So, therefore, the fl and then the other other values are kept as such. So, we see that uh, it, the after this increment is made, it is still a flow, right? So, therefore, we get a new flow f dash from f by doing this incrementing and uh, uh, the new flow will have you value have value a little extra extra by this much right this being the minimum of all this uh, this values that we calculated based on the reverse based on whether it is a reverse arc or a um, uh, forward arc right so now the next point uh, is to uh, see right you keep doing this at some point if you can find out one such forward uh, one such f incrementing path starting from x and reaching y we can increase the value of the flow this way and keep doing this thing and until we cannot find any more in f incrementing path the our claim is that at this stage our claim is that at this stage we have indeed got the maximum flow how do we prove that? It was by, so suppose you search for an f incrementing path from x to y. So, then you find out all the vertices which can be reached from x <coughs> via some unsaturated paths. That means, uh, paths composed of forward and reverse arcs, um, where forward arcs have some um, are not saturated and reverse arcs are not f uh, or uh, f positive and then um, so collect all those vertices from which from a, um, those vertices which can be reached from x so let's say these are the vertices set of vertices right then now y will be somewhere here outside so uh, now we consider all the arcs which are going from this side to this side right uh, so can some of the arcs will be forward arcs, some of the arcs will be reverse arcs, some can be like this reverse arcs, right, some can. So, now uh, the claim is that if this arc uh, was not, if this arc was unsaturated, then even this vertex could have been reached from x, because uh, this was a unsaturated path starting from x and reaching here and if this is an unsaturated edge, you can reach here also from x. So, therefore, this has to be a saturated edge. that means the capacity the flow value here has to be equal to the capacity same for this all this uh, blue arcs the forward arcs. As far as the reverse arcs are concerned they should have value 0 on them why because if they have non 0 values uh, they are f positive arcs we could have reached up to here from x somehow and then uh, use this arc, this f positive arc to reach here also. So, therefore, this will be an unsaturated path from x to here. So, we will, uh, we can reach from x to this vertex also via uh, an unsaturated path. So, uh, that will be a contradiction. So, for, therefore, all the reverse arcs will have 0 in this case, all the forward arcs will have, uh, will be saturated that equal to the capacity, the flow value will be equal to the capacity. Now, the total here will be equal to the capacity on the these edges, right, uh, equal to the capacity on these edges. So, now, uh, which means that the flow value has equal the capacity of the cut, 
we know that for any cut the flow value has to be less than equal to the capacity of the cut here here is a flow which has equal the capacity of the cut so this that should be a maximum flow that is the argument so therefore uh, what we get the flow that we get at that stage when we cannot find any more f incrementing path from x to y should be a maximum flow in this class our intention is to uh, efficiently implement this algorithm how we are going to uh, uh, search for a f incrementing path right so the suppose our algorithm takes uh, the network as an input and uh, uh, the uh, a feasible flow also as an input that is what right. So, the, the feasible uh, flow can be 0 say 0 flow for instance all the arcs may have 0 initially. So, first we will define a set x in which the initially only the uh, source will be uh, there in that right and uh, of case so this x equal to then we will define a function p the predecessor function for each vertex we will just put it as phi in the beginning all the element of e. this is the first step in the second step our intention is to grow x what is x x will be uh, a collection of word the collection of vertices which can be reached from the source x via an unsaturated path. So, as of now all the vertices which are there in x uh, can be reached from the source via an unsaturated path and what is this p of v this will represent uh, a tree structure on x in fact. So, a parent function in fact predecessor function it is for a given vertex it will indicate the parent as of now uh, the tree is not formed at all then x contains only one vertex it is only the root it does not have a parent. So, we can put uh, empty set for everything for each stage when we capture one more vertex we will associate its parent to it right. Now, uh, the, the key thing is to have to do this thing while uh, there is either an f saturated arc f unsaturated arc a equal to u v or an f positive arc a equal to v u with u element of x and and v element of v minus x. do. So, what we are doing is we will we will do this check. So, given the current with the current x we will see whether we can find some forward arc from x, x uh, the with the tail in x and uh, the head in v minus x outside x uh, such that this arc is f unsaturated that means, the value of the flow on this arc is strictly less than the capacity of the arc. If such an arc is there then we will continue we will we will we, we are going to capture the head of that arc also we will capture v also. Another situation where we can capture v is uh, when there is an arc v u the from the reverse arc from v minus x to e x there is an arc coming into the set x there is an arc v u which is f positive which is not f and such right we do not want zero value on that if it is a non zero value of flow on it positive value of flow on it and then we will we can we can uh, capture that we also that means it is we can still go uh, use that arc to go forward and capture v 
right this is what we will do. What will we do? We are going to capture V. So, we will increase first we will add uh, x equal to x union V, we will be added to this right and of case we will we have to uh, define the parent of V as u, the predecessor of u is as V because we should be able to trace a path from V to x. So, currently we can reach V uh, from x via u, from u uh, uh, from how to reach x from x uh, to u will be uh, can be found out by following the predecessor function of u. So, for instance, u who will be u's parent and who will be u's parent's parent like that if we keep tracking then we will finally reach back to x. So, therefore, it is enough to store uh, v's parent which will be u from where we reached captured v right. This is what we are going to be. So, until, until this is end y right. So, as long as we can, so we increase the x now. Now, with this new x we will again check whether there is a forward arc which is unsaturated from new x to outside uh, or whether there is a f positive arc uh, which is incoming to the which is coming into the new x from outside right. So, then uh, we will capture the uh, in the if it is a forward arc we will capture the head of the forward arc if it is a reverse arc which is coming into the x and then we will capture the tail of that which is outside x right uh, and then in and we add it to the x and make it make a new x and then we do the procedure until then. At some point uh, two things can happen one is we may capture all of them or we may capture or may not least uh, we may capture y right. So, um, if or we may we may not be able to do this thing right. Now, the so we check whether y is captured or not. If y is element of x then so, we will compute epsilon b find E of p equal to minimum of epsilon of a, we have defined all these things epsilon of a, a element of p right, where p is the x y path Uh, defined by the predecessor function right defined by so what we are doing now is we will just check whether our sink y the destination y is already element of x in that case what we do is we find out first we have to find out a path p from y to x. How do we do y who is y's parent and then who is that y's parent's parent like that uh, we follow that predecessor function p and then we will definitely uh, reach x because we started with uh, just one node in x. So, we will have to reach x and then uh, uh, this path will be used right and uh, 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 now we can find out which is the smallest epsilon of a for a element of p uh, for this path. So, this we have already seen what we do is we just look at uh, the forward arcs for forward arcs the epsilon value is the, the difference between its capacity and the current flow value the, for the back reverse arc it is the value of the flow itself and among them you make the take the minimum and this minimum is epsilon of p right and then using this epsilon of p. Um, what we do is for each of in this path we will make this change for a forward arc uh, we will change the flow to be see we will we can change um, f of a equal to f of a plus epsilon of p will increase the flow there if for a reverse da reverse arc p will make it f of a equal to f of a minus epsilon of p 
right still be because see we have taken the minimum here over all the arcs even if you minus it will not go below 0 even if you add this thing this will not go above the capacity of that particular arc right. So, it will still be a feasible flow and uh, as we have already seen if you keep if you do this thing uh, this is the resulting values will still define a flow because if you look at one vertex it is uh, uh, there are several cases right both the with respect to the path both may be incoming arcs the two arcs of the path which are touching that vertex may be both incoming in which case we are uh, in both case uh, sorry in one case it is uh, increased and in one case it is decreased it can be uh, just entering and going out then it is in both case uh, it is in increased right. So, all those conditions we have considered before therefore, it will remain uh, a valid flow and then um, here we can uh, say that. So, uh, we got a new flow right, but on the other hand if y is not element of x then what will you do? Then we, we will collect x right, we, we return that flow that is the maximum flow and the cut dot of dot plus of x sorry. Right, because this is the uh, as we have explained this is the uh, maximum uh, flow. So, for instance we can we can uh, illustrate uh, this algorithm by considering one small example. Suppose, this is x and this is y and then here let us say this is v 3, this is v 1. Now, So, let us look at uh, this network and uh, and we will we'll mark a flow here. So, this is 4 and this is the capacity is red 4 and this is 1 and this is 1 and here this will be 1 and uh, 6 right. Here we will take it as 2 and 3 and here we will take it as 2 and 3 sorry 2 and 3 and here we will take it as 2 and 2 and uh, this be 5 and 5 and here 
this be 0 and 1 and here this be 3 and 5. and this is 5 and 5 and this is 0 and 4. So, we can check the flow conditions here for instance this vertex 4 plus 1 is 5 this outgoing is 5 plus 0 plus 0. So, this is correct here this is 5 is the incoming and then 2 plus 3 is the outgoing here it is 1 plus uh, 2 is the incoming and here 1 plus 2 is the outgoing and here is 2 and 2 and here it is 5 is the outgoing the incoming is uh, 3 plus 2 5. So, this is the this is let it let, let this be a flow. Now, for instance, we can we can with respect to this flow, we can find out an F unsaturated tree. So, what we are doing is we start with an X right. So, I will use the green color to mark it. We start initially this is X is only this one and then uh, we will we can capture because looking at this thing we see that uh, this vertex is unsaturated. Now, we can capture this also. Now, this becomes the x. Now, with respect to this x, if you look this is a saturated, this edge is a saturated edge, this edge is also a saturated edge, but this edge is not saturated because the reverse arc, but is f positive. See here this 2 is greater than 0. Therefore, we can capture this vertex right. So, now this new things and this is saturated, this is saturated. What about this one? This is also a such. So, no, this is a not a saturated edge because this is in the reverse direction 5 5. It is capacity is equal to flow, but the direction is reverse. So, we are only looking for an F positive arc. So, this this edge is quite uh, you can be used. So, therefore, this vertex can be captured. Now, we have captured this, this and this right. Now, here look this can be captured because this is a uh, unsaturated edge 2 is the flow value 3 is the capacity. So, this can be captured. Now, let us look at this vertex can it be captured. So, no this uh, this is a saturated edge because 2 is the flow value 2 is the capacity this one this one is 3 oh this can be captured because uh, 3 is unsaturated flow value is 3. 5 is the capacity. So, this can be captured using this edge ok. So, this can be captured. So, now see you should understand every time we are capturing we are remembering the path. So, for instance here this was captured due to this, this was captured due to this. So, p of this will be this, p of this will be this and so on, p of this will be this and so on. Uh, now, can this be captured? Yeah, this is an uh, saturated edge. This can be not cannot be used, but then this can be used, right? Because this is uh, uh, zero four. This can be used. This edge can be used to capture. Now you look to now y is already there in x, right? Y has become green, so that x uh, we were increasing, uh, improve, uh, adding more and more vertices to the set x. Now this y has gone into the set x. Now, we have to track the path by which we reached here. See y is preceded predecessor y was reached from here and now this was reached from here if you remember we captured this from this and then this was reached from here and then this was reached from this. This is a path that we are considering from y to x or x to y right. This is the path right that uh, if you remember the predecessors then this is the path will come. And now, we can calculate what is the value of the epsilon. Here it is 5 because the gap between the capacity and the flow value is 5 here. Here it is reverse arc right. So, therefore, uh, the flow value is the epsilon. So, 2 is the value here. Here it is uh, 5 itself because the reverse arc 
so those uh, it's a reverse arc we have to consider the flow value itself not the difference between capacity on this so the 5 is the value here and here it's a forward arc 0 and 4 the difference is 4 right so here it's a forward arc that's why we took 6 minus 1 5 so among 5 among these numbers right on various arcs 5 2 5 this is 5 and uh, 4 uh, the smallest is 2 therefore we can push a flow of 2 through this thing so that means uh, we will change 1 to 3 and this will become uh, 2 plus so here when you in the reverse arc when you are pushing the flow and this will become 0 that we are decreasing here it will decrease to 3 right because again through the reverse arc when you are pushing the flow it will become 3 and then when you are uh, going through this thing it will become 2 instead of 2 0 it will become 2 here right it will become 2 here now uh, if so we have increased now we can with respect to the new flow this will be a flow as we have already explained because we have made the changes only on along the paths and the changes are such that the flow uh, the conservation condition is still valued for on for valid on each edge now if we just uh, consider it we can we can with respect to this flow we can again calculate uh, the um, um, the set of vertices which can be reached from here now if you want to do that so let us say we will use a color this color so start with, with x right here this can be captured again because it is an unsaturated edge right but this edge is not useful this edge is not useful now from this thing can you capture this no this cannot be used so can I can only use this edge is not useful this edge is not useful this edge is not useful because the reverse arc the capacity the flow value is 0 then we cannot use it so this is a forward arc we can use this so this can be captured but this now from this thing only this is the possible edge but this is also not useful because it's all now these are the only uh, uh, set which are reachable from x now you can see that uh, y can y is not there in the now we cannot make progress uh, this we do not have any f incrementing uh, we cannot get any more vertices to the set x so we stop here but y is not there in it so we see this edges see these edges this edge this edge this edge this edge these are the cut edges but again this is a reverse edge but actually the forward edges of the cut are only this this and this right so this creates the this three creates the cut see this this and this this three edges creates the the capacity of the cut is essentially 4 plus 1 plus uh, 2 uh, so that is total 6 plus to 8 while on the reverse only pos only reverse edge its uh, flow value is 0 the flow as is also equal to the capacity of the class 8 right so this is a maximum flow so that that is so the flow we have obtained now is a maximum flow and it is this is a uh, minimum cut also this is the way it is done so therefore uh, so to demonstrate how the flow algorithm works um, so with this thing we uh, have completely described the flow algorithm of uh, um, um, flow algorithm of uh, Ford and Fulkerson. Now the point is uh, to use the flow theory to answer another question. So we have uh, um, in when we studied the connectivity, we had considered this question for undirected graphs, uh, namely from x to suppose you have this undirected graph, undirected network, and here this is x and here this is x and here this is y and now um, this in how many directed paths are there from x to y how many arc disjoint directed paths are there from x to y this kind of paths are called arc disjoint paths so why are you interested in the maximum number of arc disjoint paths directed arc disjoint paths from x to y possibly it is a communication network and uh, each directed edge may mean that we can communicate in the forward direction from x to 
y from sorry from a vertex u to v if there is a directed edge from u to v right. So, if you want to communicate from x to y there should be a directed path from x to x, x to y. Suppose somebody destroys an edge a communication link between two vertices and then uh, naturally we should seek another directed path right. So, uh, so if you want uh, to be sure that we are safe we want uh, lots of directed paths from x to y that should be arc disjoint because if there is the same arc is present in all the directed paths then the enemy can destroy that particular arc and then we, he can destroy all the uh, directed paths from x to y in which which case our communication uh, link from x to y will be broken completely we will, our com we will not be able to communicate from x to y. Therefore, um, uh, see from the point of view of the network designer it is interest important to have several uh, arc disjoint directed paths from x to y in the network. So, uh, this question uh, given a network and two vertices x and a special vertices x and y source and sink. Uh, how many arc disjoint paths are there? What is the maximum number of arc disjoint paths in the network x and y? On the other hand, if you are uh, trying to break the communication between x and y, what we are interested, what would be uh, interesting to us? It would be the minimum number of arcs that we have to destroy such that all the directed paths from x to y are destroyed. In other words, the we will be interested in the min cut minimum directed cut right. So, in the directed cut when we say a cut we only mean the edges of the cut in the forward direction we are not we, we, we can discard the arcs which are coming backward right it's from one side to the other we only have to worry about uh, from we have, we have we want to go from x to y. So, one side of the one subset uh, contains x the remaining subset contains y and uh, we are only interested in the edges going from the x side to the other side right the coming back is not very interesting. So, the as far as uh, the enemy is concerned uh, he will be interested in figuring out the minimum cut that means the minimum number of arcs that we can that by removing which he can uh, disconnect x from y. So, disconnect x from y means there would not be any more directed paths from path from x to y. So, these are interesting questions like in the like the Menger's theorem uh, here also we can say that these two quantities are going to be same the maximum number of arc disjoint path uh, is going to be equal to the minimum number of arcs that uh, we have to remove so that uh, we can disconnect x from y the, the, so that there is no more directed x y paths from uh, x y path in the network right. To prove this thing we will use the idea of the flow uh, as follow, follows. So, for this purpose we define a notion called uh, circulations. So, though we are saying it is for this purpose it is in it is much more uh, it is much more uh, wider applications than that, but in our context we will say that we are defining it for that purpose. Um, what is the circulation? It is just like a flow in the case of flow we wanted the conservation condition only on the intermediate nodes. We left out uh, the two vertices which are which we call source sensing x and y we did not require the conservation condition to work. For all vertices uh, other than x and y we wanted uh, f plus of v equal to f minus of v right. But suppose uh, we want this conservation condition to be valid for y and x also then we say that this is a circulation that is a circulation that is if for all um, v element of v we want f plus of v equal to f minus of v. This is not a flow this is different because circulation though all the that conservation condition is uniform now and also we do not have any capacities. Uh, we are not worried about the capacities when you are talking about the circulation. We can always define capacities and talk about feasible circulations later, but as of now we are not bothered about capacities. 
So, we are only uh, requiring that the conservation condition should be met in every vertex while in the flows we wanted it only for all vertices except y and x here we want it for x and y also. Uh, so, such a such a thing uh, is called a circulation and again we are not um, bothered about source and sink here. Now, uh, the circulation uh, the point here is that uh, once you uh, talk about circulations, circulations and flows are very much related, why are they related? So, if you have a particular circulation uh, then what we can do is suppose you can identify in the uh, in the network there is a circulation f then what we can do is we can identify an x and a y and then uh, so suppose there is an edge between them right x to y edge is there right now uh, what if sorry uh, suppose there is a y to x edge is there right now what if i remove uh, this edge from the network suppose i remove this remove this edge from the network right so so i'll so this edge is removed now now you can see that um, we have destroyed the circulation but then this has become a flow uh, why because except in the x and y are the only two vertices which are affected by the removal of this edge there the conservation condition will be violated but in all other vertices uh, the conservation condition will still hold because this edge is not affecting them and now uh, the value of the flow this has become a flow now the value of the flow will be equal to the value of the flow on the uh, if you that will be equal to the sum of the flows on the outgoing edges of x minus the sum of the flows on the incoming edges of x that will essentially be equal to uh, what was here right because that is how it got balanced because you know this was an incoming edge the total flow if you take up the sum on the outgoing edges here and minus uh, the flows on the incoming edges this total will be exactly equal to what is incoming here so that uh, in the original case when it was a circulation uh, that could add up to 0 right incoming flow was equal to uh, outgoing flow that is why uh, the sum of incoming flow was equal to sum of outgoing. So, if you just remove one edge the here the sum of incoming uh, outgoing edges uh, minus the sum of remaining incoming edges is going to be the va flow value on this thing. So, the so with respect to the circulation whatever value was there. So, therefore, the value of the flow is going to be the value of the circulation on this removed edge right. And now, so that means that is how we can convert a circulation to a flow you can identify two vertices which are uh, adjacent. So, so, especially where if there is a y x directed edge we can remove it and immediately it becomes a flow with value uh, equal to the value of the circulation on that edge. Now, the other way suppose if you have a flow from x to y with a particular value how will you convert it to a circulation. So, there is an x y flow here you know the value of the flow is this much right and we can always put an edge from y to x and make the value uh, f of this arc equal to uh, value of the flow flow and then what will happen. So, then for this x also this will incoming flow is equal to outgoing flow and for y also because this was the incoming flow and this will be the outgoing flow that will be equal to uh, incoming flow will be equal to the outgoing flow and therefore, all vertices uniformly will satisfy the condition and therefore, it will become a circulation. This is the way to convert a flow to a circulation. So, therefore, uh, see the point here is that you can rather study circulation rather than flows because if you get some results uh, some get the result regarding the using the circulation then it would not be very difficult to convert the result to a corresponding result to uh, about the flows because this is so the difference is very little therefore, but on the other hand studying 
circulations is much more convenient. Why is it much more convenient? Because of the uniformity. For instance, uh, in the flows, there are two special nodes which has to be taken care uh, of separately. While in circulation, every vertex satisfies the conservation condition, it makes it a uh, little more easier to study. Therefore, we would rather study the circulation rather than flow. Finally, if you want to make a statement about the flow, we will first make a statement about the circulation and then uh, convert it to the flow using this idea, right. In most cases, it will work out. That is what that is all we wanted to see. And again, uh, so for instance, because of the uniformity of this conservation condition, we can uh, formulate the uh, circulation uh, like this that uh, system of conditions uh, the on each vertex can be uh, written using a matrix uh, like this. So, let us define uh, this matrix M, M is equal to this matrix. So, where the matrix, uh, these are all arcs, this is called the incidence matrix of the directed graph network. Uh, here we will put uh, the arc set, arc set money, the edges, the directed edges. So, M and here the number of vertices 1, 2, 3. So, this is an n, n by m uh, this thing. For each vertex what will we do? So, we will see for this arc if it is one of the end points of the arc then only we need to put anything otherwise we will put 0. If it is not an end point of this arc we will put a 0. Uh, so, suppose this is i j. Uh, suppose it is a tail of the arc we will put a 1 right a i we will put uh, sorry here uh, that particular arc uh, we will put 1. If it is on the other hand if it is the head of an arc we will put a minus 1 right in the corresponding to the arc. In other words for every vertex the how many entries will be there equal to the number of arcs which is incident on it uh, right for all, all the incoming arcs we will corresponding columns uh, corresponding places we will have negative one all the outgoing arts in the corresponding places we will have positive ones. So, uh, like that we can construct each column of uh, each row of this thing in a column what will you see. So, that means uh, for a particular arc which all vertices will be affected only those vertices will have uh, many of them will be zeros only two entries will be non zero one will be minus one one will be positive one because if it is an arc. Uh, one will be seeing it as a tail and then one will be seeing uh, uh, this vertex will say that okay for this arc I am the tail, this vertex will say that for this arc I am the head. Therefore, uh, in one uh, row we will we would have uh, entered minus 1 and the other row we would have entered plus 1 all others will be uh, will be zeros. So, every column will have 1 minus 1, 1 plus 1 all other zeros right because it is an arc it uh, will work as a tail for one vertex work as a head for another vertex and uh, will not affect any other vertices that is it. So, this is the incidence matrix and then this circulation can be expressed as um, m into this circulation matrix into f, f being the flow, flow function. Uh, so, that what do we mean by that? So, this f can be seen as a column vector where uh, these are again a 1, a 2 the arcs uh, a 3. So, a m. So, there are these are the arcs corresponding to each arc we, we have this position and then in that whatever is the flow value this f of a 1 will be written here, f of a 2 will be written here, f of a 3 will be written here like this is a vector corresponding to this function. So, this flow is a function uh, on a particular value that means on an arc right if this function is defined on the arc set if on particular arc a i it is taking a particular value f of a i then that f of a i will come in the position corresponding to the arc a i that is all. So, we have just written it as a this thing what will this be equal to this has to be if it f is a circulation uh, see we are not talking about flows we are talking about circulations and then m of has to be equal to 0 why is it so? Because if you consider any row of this incidence matrix, it when it multiplies this thing, uh, you know, so a row corresponds to a vertex here. That vertex has non zero entries uh, only for the arcs which are incident on it. Some of the arcs are incoming, they have one ent entry 1, some of the out arcs, sorry, incoming arcs have entry minus 1, and outgoing arcs have entry plus 1. So, it will sum up the values flow values on the 
outgoing arcs minus uh, the sum of the uh, flow values on the incoming arcs. So, naturally because of the conservation condition that will be 0 for every row this will happen therefore, we will get a 0 vector. This is a 0 vector means this is a vector of this sort 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 on m dimension a 1 a 2 uh, a m right corresponding to this. So, sorry this is not m dimension this is an n dimensional vector because the number of for each uh, row we will have 0 0 1 2 3 n being the number of vertices right. <coughs> now, uh, so this conservation can condition can be easily expressed using this incidence matrix as m f equal to 0. Now, uh, now we will let us look at this vector f f the vector corresponding to the circulation right the again whichever I have discussed. So, the uh, the each component position correspond to an arc of the graph and uh, the uh, circulation value the circulation at that arc will be written on that particular position right that is that vector. Uh, then now what is the support of this thing the arcs uh, corresponding to which the circulation value is non zero is called the support of that as usual word support support means the uh, the set of arcs a element of uh, a such that f of a not equal to zero right now the next statement we want to make is that uh, Yeah, this incidence matrix is an incidence matrix of T and uh, so F B a non zero circulation in a digraph. Non zero circulation means uh, at least uh, one of the circulation values is uh, non zero, no, not that all are zeros. Then the support of F contains a cycle. Um, Moreover, if f is non-negative, then the support of f contains a directed cycle. So why is uh, it so? So the so if you consider the support of f, and uh, you take any vertex, is it possible that there is only one with respect to the circulation? There is exactly one incident edge of this vertex has non-zero value. That is absolutely not possible. Suppose if there is only one non-zero value, how can the the incoming arcs um, uh, sum up to the outgoing arcs right they cannot add up to 0 right they cannot add up to 0 if there is only 1 because if you sum up all of them uh, that that value only will come right it is a non zero value and it is not possible to have just one non zero uh, edge uh, incident on one vertex. So, there should be at least one more. So, if so now if you take the subgraph corresponding to the support of uh, this thing that means those if you collect those edges which have uh, non zero values of the circulation and then we will see that every vertex have degree at least 2 and naturally therefore uh, there should be a cycle uh, in this subgraph right because if you start moving out of a vertex you can always keep moving at least once and the uh, only way to stop is to come back right come back and uh, uh, form a cycle. So, this we have seen several times therefore, if uh, every vertex of degree at least 2 with respect to that subgraph, subgraph corresponding to the arcs where the flow uh, the circulation values are non zero, then it is very clear that with respect to these arcs the subgraph should contain uh, a cycle because the degrees of each vertex is at least 2. We can trace the cycle and then the first time it comes back and revisits a vertex it the circle is formed. It is not possible to keep going without uh, revisiting a cycle because once you enter a vertex you can always go out because there are two edges incident on it. So, here we did not consider the uh, directions on the edges we were just talking about the undirected the underlying undirected graph of the support uh, corresponding to the support will have a cycle. But we can uh, suppose all uh, values of the circulation were non-negative. So, 
then we can also see that the support uh, the arcs corresponding to the support will have a directed cycle why is it so because uh, for every vertex if there is a, uh, it's not possible to have uh, only all the all the non zero values uh, the the uh, on all all the non zero edges incident on it are all incoming or all outgoing it's not possible if there is uh, one outgoing edge which is non zero then there should be at least one incoming edge also which is non zero otherwise how can they together sum up to zero that means how can the incoming uh, f values be equal to the outgoing values because all are uh, non zero right all are non negative because if the negative and positive it could have been possible even if all the outgoing edges are zero incoming edges themselves with some negative and some positive they could have added to zero but if all are non negative it is not possible some of the incoming has to uh, be present if there are some out some of the outgoing edges have non zero values so we will get indeed a directed cycle we can follow the direction of the edges because you can enter and go out so therefore there will be a directed cycle if all uh, the values of the circulations are non negative and now uh, the next claim is that um, if so okay before that we have to define some special kind of circulations circulations uh, so you can consider a particular so you take any cycle and then you give a particular direction sense of traversal um, on that cycle right then so if it can be like this so this is a cycle so cycle suppose this is a directions now we can traverse we can decide to traverse this cycle like this now see because we are traversing this way so this is a reverse arc 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 this is also a reverse arc but this is a forward arc right so because it in the direction of the traversal now uh, we will say that if it's for the forward arcs we will define one f of uh, f c of this arc is equal to one and for the reverse arcs f c uh, of this arc will be equal to minus one right so now you can see that uh, this is indeed a circulation because um, if both are reverse then this is minus 1 this is minus 1 you can see that uh, they are balancing each other so outgoing edges and incoming edge here similarly here it is an incoming edge this is uh, also an incoming edge but this is 1 this is minus 1 therefore they add up to 0. So therefore is, this is indeed a circulation it is very easily verified from each of this thing. So this is called a circulation associated with the cycle we will use the circulations associated with the cycle to study circulations in general in the next class. Thank you.